Hey there, collectors, it's Steven here with a review of the long-awaited, highly demanded, fan-anticipated, another hype term, SH Figure Arts Shenron. After years of being teased and scrapped prototypes, Bandai has finally released the Eternal Dragon as a general release. In action figure format, we finally have the chance to buy it. But... Should we be careful what we wish for? Well, you know the drill. Let's take a look to see whether or not it's worth adding into your collection. Fans of the channel will know I do unboxing videos for nearly everything. I don't like showing the boxes in the review because it's not really a part of the figure and it can take up more time than needed during a video. And I only include the box when I need to because it's interesting or there's a neat gimmick. Here, Shenron's box is very big, and he's one big puzzle, so instead of doing an unboxing video, well, this one's kind of a two-in-one. I sort of do an unboxing here, but it's not like my usual style. Anyway, Shenron's box has the same motif as the recent DBZ figure arts with the manga-like paneling and a nice, clean backing to it where you can see a whole bunch of cool promotional pictures. Though his box is indeed big, it's not very thick. It's just long and skinny, and if YouTube didn't have archaic policies, I'd make some jokes there, but hey, you know what, you're creative enough. Pretend I said something witty. Shenron opens up on the side, and he's all condensed down into one tray with one sheet of instructions. Keep these. When it comes to assembly, though I'll show you here, these are essential in understanding how exactly to put this fluster cuck of a display together because it really is a balancing act. Shenron's tray has no tape, so feel free to pop it off nice and easy like, making sure nothing comes flying out. You see that I'm pulling the display parts out here? We have one big stand, two smaller ones with little U supports, and then we have the base. All Bandai products have trademark or production, wherever you want to call it, information on them, and it looks like it's a bit difficult to make out in the footage here, but Shenron's information is on his base. Next up, we have the Dragon Ball display set, which has two layers of protective plastic which are easy to peel off. Thanks Bandai for looking out for paint damage. Now for Shenron assembly. He has two whiskers, one with a thick plug and one with a thin. After this, you need to assemble Shenron together, again refer to the instructions once you get yours, but here's me doing it in somewhat real time. It's not difficult to figure out how to put them together at all. However, as you can clearly see, Shenron does not play nice and it doesn't like to stay together. He's a uh, very loosey-goosey, which isn't good. More on that later. Mm, Steven Rage. Okay, now support stand time. The big main arm goes in the front part of the oval of the base with a slight turn to it. Then, the two other arms go on the sides. You get two clips and these go in the center of those support arms. Then you plug in the U support pieces. Now the fun part, figuring out where Shenron rests. Follow the instructions to see the exact segments where Shenron rests. But I can give you some tips. Shenron coils around the front of the big arm, and the left arm, when looking at the display base, it's supposed to be holding up Shenron right behind his second set of arms. Once you get this down, and you master that coil structure, yeah, I bumble around with it a little bit here, it's easy to get him back on and off, no problem. <sighs> okay, now the review. So, Bandai, buddy. About nearly $100, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's clear Shenron is quite an impressive display piece from a distance. It's a Chinese-like dragon all coiled up, who doesn't like that? However, the craftsmanship and quality leave quite a bit to be desired, and by a bit, I mean in today's day and age, it's a de facto SH Monster Arts in design and quality. Now, what you didn't get to see in the unboxing portion is that Shenron actually had some chipping to it with bits of scales, yeah, not just paint, on my table 
and even in the plastic tray. Yay, but maybe okay, that could have just been from the innards of the joints where everything was connected, right? Yeah, but it still doesn't matter. Let's look closer. Shenron Sculpt is great, and that is definitely the saving grace of this figure when it comes to the display present, and that's apparent right away from the head sculpt. Unfortunately, his horns do look a little cheap, almost rubbery, but they do look accurate, so there is that. Maybe that's just the material, but anyway, let's look back at the jaw. You'll notice on the jaw, the paint immediately looks like it's hit or miss. Pastel-like and chunky in some spots. Not good. What's also not good would be the red lines not blending well at all. Instead of being crisp, it bleeds in with the yellow. The yellow too being gunky as I said before, and being flaky in some parts. Absolutely not good. And then random green splotches here and there, almost like the paint didn't dry completely in some spots when it was in the factory. Very poor quality. Also, also, there are these random seam lines that do nothing for the figure running up and down Shenron's body in a few spots. They just look ugly. And yeah, we have yellow splotches on the green too, kind of like a paintbrush. You know what? I can go on, but I'll put an end to it here. Shenron Sculpt is great, and at a distance, he looks fine. But up close, mm -mm. mine, I won't mince words, he has garbage quality. All right, so Shen Rong here, pretty much by this point. Articulation. Why does it have any to begin with? Okay, let, let's go over it. So the whiskers, like you saw before, they plug in, so they're on swivels. So you can change up the expression just a little bit so they can look a little wavy here and there. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. But um, they like to fall out. That's awesome. Yeah, no. No, it's not. That's not awesome. Okay. So, mouth. What the? Can I wish for a better figure art, Shenron, please? Okay. So, jaw. The mouth open and closes on a hinge. Just like that. Very simple. Then, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine ball joints. So this way we can get Shenron to pose in any position that we would like this way. So that's a great range of movement there, right? So neck, neck area is perfectly fine. We can look about that far down. And as you saw with the one picture before, we can go about that far up. You can probably push them a bit more, but then you're going to be popping joints off. That's never a good thing. Okay, so we got the ball joints out of the way. Now we have two sets of arms. They have the same range of articulation. They plug into the shoulder connection on a ball joint, and then they have a hinge. So you can twist and turn, move them up and down. They have the bicep swivel, as you would come to expect, double hinge elbows, and then the swivel hinge combo of the wrists. So basically, standard SH Figuart style arms. Um, can't pop the hands off, or maybe you can, but I just don't want to. It would be cool if Shenron came with like fists or something, wouldn't it? Or, you know, maybe we can set him up with a Kamehameha. Oh, that would be really cool, right? Yeah, no, not here. So Shenron does actually have a few more points of articulation. Not here, though. Yeah, this cut here, the other few cuts that are on Shenron, like down here and whatnot. Really? They're there for no reason. So as you saw before, Shenron, Shenron plugs in together. That's a great way to show this off, okay? And the way that Shenron plugs in together is there are these little nubs, okay, that you have to line up. And once you do that, they don't spin and lock into place. They just fit in together. And each one of those is on a ball joint. Okay, so you lock Shenron in place like that, lock it in place, air quotes here, and then you can spin Shenron around, you can rock it back and forth a little bit. So we do have a few more ball joints, right? But they just don't hold together or support very well. So you can spin Shenron around, oh yeah, but I mean, there's no support of joints here, like there's no weight support here. Shenron just flops around. He's flimsy. 
So you need the support stand, but because but because Shenron is so big and he makes me lose my train of thought. Yeah. So basically what I'm saying is we get one, two, three, yes, four, five different connection points that all like to fall apart. And because he is just so coily and we have this fixed pose support stand, okay? I don't see a whole lot of reasons behind an articulated Chenron here. Um, yeah, you can get him to pose around in some neat poses, maybe, but realistically speaking, now for accessories and uh, aside from a stand Shenron comes with this Dragon Ball base yeah it's a shame he doesn't come with individual balls <laughs> but he comes with an explosion effect with those seven balls to fit inside the balls are gold yay and they fit in the explosion perfectly and the explosion really does have an amazing gradient effect going on here so that's cool yeah, place the effect part at the base of the stand and put the tip of Shenron's tail, body, I don't know, inside the explosion, and there you go. <whistles> Woo, yay. Now it's suggested to use a Tamashi effect thunder to replicate him being summoned like I showed you in one of the pictures earlier in the review, but, you know, that's optional. And it would have been nice if he had his own unique effect since it's clear the money for this one didn't go to quality control. But I'll go ahead and I'll stop talking about that there because now we have the size comparison. This time with the whole Shenron display. Great sizing here. He looks really big despite being out of scale with the other figures you're going to have in your display. That's okay, really, because if you're into photography, action figure photography to be specific, you can definitely make this work with some creativity. So, buy it now, skip it, or wait for a deal. Shenron has a great sculpt with next to abysmal paint application articulation that really doesn't do a whole hell of a lot, and really, no accessories aside from one small fan service one. You know what? This is one release band I really didn't put any love into. Sure, this was redone from the ground up compared to when we first saw Shenron, but that doesn't mean he was done correctly. There's no reason this should have been an SH Figuarts. This should have been a Figuarts Zero. We only got an SHF because some collectors wouldn't touch it if it were a Figuarts Zero. But if it were a Zero, more attention to the craftsmanship would have been had here, and no money towards engineering would be a plus, and we would have gotten better quality. And then you have to ask what came first, chicken or the egg, maybe a catch-22, whatever you want to put in there. At the end of the day, though, this is what we got. Now, Shenron isn't a bad figure. He's just not that good. Absolutely could be better. Lower your expectations and go into this purchase with the idea you're getting a statue with a couple of joints. Despite the things wrong with Shenron, it is Shenron at the end of the day. It's an amazing display piece and it will undoubtedly command the center of attention on your shelf. If you're gonna get this, go into it for that reason alone. Because in doing that job, it does it really well. If I had to make the comparison, just like the SH Monster Arts by Alante. Well, folks, that's the end of this review. Thanks for watching and be sure to follow me on social media to catch more behind the scenes shenanigans and updates. The end card should be popping up now with more hand selected SDR goodness for you to watch. So check out some of those videos. Be sure to check the description too to see where you can buy this figure or others like it and some cool links like the credits for this video and other ways you can help out the channel. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you in the next